before watching the trailer, I was hesitant, right? Because there's been a lot of talks of how much reshoots that this movie has had. And I feel like whenever you have reshoots, it's not a good thing. But I want to make another run at making Captain America an official military position. And if we disagree on how to manage this situation, then what happens? You may be Captain America, but you're not Steve Rogers. Personally, I hate the fact that he doesn't have any superpowers. Do you feel like this is a straight up part of the Captain America anthology, or do you do you consider it a little bit different with them changing the main character and it being so long since the last Captain America movie? Welcome to Backseat Directing, where we talk about movies, TV shows, comics, and more. We're your hosts, Andrew and Aaron, and we put out new episodes every Monday and Thursday. And today we're reacting to the new Captain America trailer. Three, two, one, action. action. Captain America, A Brave New World, the fourth installment of this franchise. Oh boy. More hype than Captain America has ever had. I, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, um, I didn't pull that off. <laughs> I could hold on to it for like one second. I know. You just surprised me there. Um, so what do you think? Um, before we go into the trailer, we do our first thoughts. What do you think of the title? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm have you you first of all, have you seen this trailer? I have. So I have not. It's been hard to avoid details on it. So I've yeah. seen a little bit. I mean, I've seen the stills, spoilers for you guys if you haven't seen it. I've seen the stills of Red Hulk, and I've seen that little tiny clip of him catching the shield and throwing it into the ground. But that's basically all I've seen of the trailer. Yeah. Uh that was a good shot. Um so I guess maybe not too much of your thoughts <laughs> if you've already seen the trailer then. Yeah. Um before watching the trailer, I was hesitant, right? Because there's been a lot of talks of how much reshoots that this movie has had. And I feel like whenever you have reshoots, it's not a good thing. Uh, take The Flash, for example. Um, and hearing rumors that it didn't sit well with audiences the first time around, you know, like that's never a good sign, especially for a Marvel project that's, you know, Marvel's been kind of you know, missing the mark a little bit opposed to phase three of the MCU. And Captain America is such an iconic character within this franchise. Are they going to be able to meet the standard? Because I think a lot of people hold Winter Soldier and Civil War in the top 10 of all MCU projects. I think that's a pretty general consensus. So is that going to be the case for Captain America, Brave New World? A different actor, different story? Um, well, I don't know. A quick comment on the reshoots. Um, I just want a quick Google search. The Hollywood Reporter says, despite a bunch of reports saying that there were multiple sets of reshoots for Captain America, Brave New World, apparently there was only one set of reshoots. Mm. That's what Hollywood Reporter says. This is a set of reshoots that took 22 days, which is drastically less than the reshoots for Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, which took six weeks. And I think Multiverse of Madness turned out pretty good. So maybe that information, that kind of correction of a lot of this bad press can help restore some confidence in the project. Because my thought process kind of, like I think what Hollywood Reporter is trying to address here is a lot of people seem to think there have been like three sets of reshoots. Yeah, I feel like sure. that's basically what has been in the zeitgeist. I mean, that's the way it seems. People talking like right. these movies have more reshoots than original shots. Right. Well, I'm excited to see your reaction to this and talk about the trailer. Let's just jump in it right now before we do what do you got to tell the audience andrew well i want you guys please 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 if you wouldn't mind to just hit that subscribe button hit a like on this video it helps the channel find new people uh make sure that you share the channel with friends and family because it's the best way for us to grow organically and thank you so much for watching this video boom all right let's get this trailer started wilson handsome Thanks for coming in. Well, thank you for the invite, sir. I have to admit, I'm still getting used to the new look. They said to uh, lose the mustache after the election. election. You and I haven't always agreed in the past. 
But I want to make another run at making Captain America an official military position. And if we disagree on how to manage this situation, then what happens? Work with me, Sam. We'll show the world a better way forward. Your inner circle has been compromised. Either you can't see that, or you don't want to. What if it's a trap? Global power is shifting. You're just a pawn. You may be Captain America, but you're not Steve Rogers. Nobody is. Are there two Falcons there? Well, the guy they set up. Boom. Dude, that's an epic shot. I mean, it's cool. Yeah. There's been a lot of people complaining about how like computer generated everything is, specifically like with that shot. Um, the background of it doesn't look real, but. It looks super cool. I mean, yeah, it's it red, does. red Hulk throwing Captain America's shield into the ground. It's like it's kind of like seeing Hulk try to pick up Thor's hammer. You yeah, know, it's and awesome. Maybe the shot's not done yet. Yeah, we you know, like, see Hulk interact with the shield very much. You know? Yeah, no, not, not that really I can at all. Recall. Yeah, because he he was fighting Thor in the first Avengers, and that's kind he doesn't of, really fight Captain then, America. Yeah, then he fights Iron Man and the Hulkbuster in the next Avengers, and then in the Avengers after that, he's not really like doing much. It would have been so cool to see Hulk like throw Captain America. Like mm -hmm. if there was a, you know, he had to get up to like some top of a building or something and Cap jumped up and Hulk like boosted him into the air a oh, hundred yeah. feet. That'd, Dude, be that'd be so sick. cool. So what'd you think of this trailer? Um, I thought it was really well cut together. I mean, like I you, you and I were both bopping along. Yeah. Like, Good like, edit. Um, edited really well. There's a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, I think they have always had a long way to go to sell people on a new Captain America mm -hmm. just because of how beloved Chris Evans is, Steve Rogers is to everyone's heart. Yeah. Um, personally, I hate the fact that he doesn't have any superpowers, but I did watch, I get it. I that's, watched that's gonna get hard. I watched the show. Hard to get over. Yeah. I think it's really hard to swallow. Even because I was watching this with my mom this is when I saw the trailer for the first time, and she is a. Uh, an MCU fan, but she doesn't like dive deep into everything like we yeah. do, you know? And she was like, does he have powers? How is he going to do this? And I'm like, I mean, he can fly <laughs> in the suit only. It's like, so that suit is not, so you watch Superman versus Batman, you know, and Batman's got this tank of a suit. The suit he's wearing is not going to do that yeah. much to protect you watch, Red Hulk. You watch, Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. Yeah, he's like, covered, he's covered in a super right. strong suit. Like this, this suit is mostly for mobility, and then the wings protect him from bullets and things like that, which we've seen him do a dozen times. Sure, it feels like he's still Falcon, just different colors on his outfit. Yeah, but he does have the shield now. How much stronger does Captain America's shield itself make you? You know, the shield, symbol, it's highly Andrew, symbolic. It's a symbol. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this movie is a lot about symbolism, yeah. um, which is cool. Um, it's a lot about stepping into the shoes, the metaphorical shoes of Steve Rogers and filling that role. Um, I'm interested to see Sam's philosophy because I thought that was a strong point of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which is one of my favorite Marvel shows for Disney. I think that... You know, obviously it's no dare, Daredevil, but <laughs> um, but it was good. It was enjoyable, and the villain was strong. I liked his arc in it. I just didn't like him not wearing the or not taking on the mantle in terms of the power, and just taking on the mantle in terms of the symbolism. Because we've seen how valuable the symbol of Captain America is to the government in the MCU universe, right? Like they went ahead and they created this new character to take on Captain America, which becomes a U.S. agent, um, something Walker, John Walker. So they created him just because Captain America is that important. They have to keep him in the world. And he's so important to the U.S. government, they want to control him, which they were not able to do with Steve Rogers. So they made this whole new character, but then we saw how that went awry in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And now they're trying to 
it looks like in the trailer of this movie, pull Sam into that role. Like, let's work together. I mean, you can be our symbol. We'll back you and support you, and we'll have a give and take. But, I mean, if it wasn't a good enough deal for Steve, how is it going to be a good enough deal for Sam? You know, the character, despite changing actors, which, rest in peace, um, despite changing to Harrison Ford, is still the same character. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'd be interested to see how, if his philosophy has changed or if he's willing to compromise in some way. Funny line in the beginning, though, where Sam yeah. is like, I'm still getting used to your new look. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Harrison Ford is awesome. I saw a really funny meme the other day that was saying how uh, the perspective of the presidency has changed so much because Harrison Ford was playing a president 30 years ago and still playing a president now because our I presidents are so too, much older. He's like 80 something. Yeah. Oh yeah. my goodness. I mean, our presidents are what, like 70 in their late 70s. 77, 78. I think, like that. yeah. Old. But it's also crazy to me after the recent, which I don't want to get far into this, but after the recent political events that so much media is depicting assassination attempts on the president mm. because it's going on in The Boys and it's going on in this, that the villain just took shots at Harrison Ford. So scary. I mean, right. It's, yeah. It's a little weird, close to it's, home. It's weird timing, right. you know, with everything sure. going on. Uh, I was going to ask you a question. And oh, I have a question for you. If yeah, you okay, have okay. time to think of that. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel like this is a straight up part of the Captain America anthology or do you do you consider it a little bit different with them changing the main character and it being so long since the last Captain America movie? Because the last Captain America movie was Captain America 3. Mm. Civil War is what, like 2016? Because um, 2018 is Infinity War. So yeah, yeah. 2016. So it's been eight years since they yeah. made a Captain America movie and the main character is different and the president is different. So are you asking if I include this in like yeah. the franchise? Is it now? I mean, because it's called Captain America Brave New World. It's called Captain America 4. It's by all technical accounts a sequel in the Captain America series. Do you think it's, you, for you in your mind, is this branching and splitting them apart? Captain America 1 through 3 is a trilogy and now we're starting a new trilogy? Or I is mean, Captain it, it's definitely going to feel a lot different. Um, well, for one, he just doesn't have powers. Yeah, I'm gonna say that I mean, a hundred times because it's. I mean, it's it's really hard to get over that that he doesn't that that is Captain America, the super soldier. Yeah, like it's really cool when he does that in, in the it, middle of the trailer. He does that kick where it's like a split kick yeah. sideways, and he flips with the wings. It's super cool. But it's like, wow, he's he's like top tier human. Yeah, <laughs> in Cap, ability. Cap did the same thing without the wings. You right. Know, Cap would do the same kind of crazy yeah. kicks and flips. But it's like. It just makes everything more believable when your main character in a superhero film has a reason to be in the same presence as a Hulk and not die in the first three seconds. Yeah, I like the I like that he has his own ideology to his Captain America. Sure, we got to see that in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and we got to see him talking about you know taking on the mantle as you know an African American. Captain America and what that means. And then we got to see the connection to, you know, that original character, which I'm forgetting his name from the comic books, but Eli, um, the Eli, what's the last name? Bradley. Eli, do you remember oh, him? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, 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 like, yeah. And like uh, his grandson right. becomes the, um, he'll, I think his grandson will be joining the Young Avengers and everything. But we got to see all the ideology behind that because the original Captain America, Steve Rogers, is so well known for his ideology and representing mm -hmm. like the little guy, the person that's being picked on. And you know, he's he's not just about America. He just hates he hates bullies and he cares about standing up for what's right no matter what flag or no matter what it's behind. So he had an amazing set of beliefs, and you need to bring that. You need to bring that heavy to the new Captain America. So I think he brings everything in the beliefs department because that his speech at the end of Falcon and the Winter Soldier to the news crew, like it had me, you know, feeling yeah. excited. I was like, yeah, yeah like let's go. But what he makes, what he's bringing to the beliefs department, he's not bringing to the superhero, the superhero department. department. And it's like, oh, Andrew, Aaron, Iron Man doesn't have power. Bullshit. Iron, Iron Man has, has powers. powers. Yeah. He's one of the strongest <laughs> Avengers. Like, yeah, but he, he is a superhero. And like, if you look at them without, both without their tech, I mean, Iron Man still has all these other attributes. Iron Man. Genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. Like he's Iron Man's also the one developing all of that. Yeah. The Falcon is not making his wingsuit. He's I mean, not, he, you know, yeah. like. He is badass without the suit still on, like you said, on human terms. We saw in right. Captain America, the Winter Soldier, like him without the suit plenty, you know, kicking ass, taking names. He's still awesome. He's still a soldier and trained and very strong. Yeah. But it's that, it's a far cry from 
the toughest human. Yeah. You know, like you see what they have to do with Batman, the feats they have to make Batman capable of just for him to like stand next to. Yeah. And, and like, and I'm even that it's like a stretch. Yeah. But it's well, Batman, like I'm a huge Batman defender. I freaking love Batman, but Batman is virtually useless in the doomsday fight in Batman mm -hmm. versus Superman. Mm -hmm. This is their version of, of him fighting doomsday. Is he going to have help? You know, is he going to have, is he going to have somebody to fill in like the way Batman had Superman yeah. and Wonder Woman? Cause that's what he would need to fight Red Hulk. Unless they're showing, there's something, I mean, I have to wait to see the movie to, I'm obviously going to see the movie. Yeah. Like, wouldn't you think <laughs> he's, you know, flying on his, with his wings and he's coming in <laughs> and he like <laughs> spins over to kick the Red Hulk and just breaks his Sh leg, shatters every bone <laughs> in his legs. <laughs> What is he gonna do? That's like literally his most powerful finishing move is the full jet force flip into that kick. Yeah. And that's not gonna do it's anything like, to the not gonna do he's not even gonna move, he's just gonna crumble on his <laughs> forehead. Like how do you get over an obstacle like that? Obviously Marvel's made characters that don't have like these crazy powers be really cool. Like the Punisher. He's got no powers, but he's also not fighting the Hulk. Yeah. If we've had the Punisher against the Hulk, that would be terrible. Black Widow couldn't handle the Hulk. Hawkeye versus yeah. Hulk would be ridiculous. Even Iron Man, who has an amazing suit, would have gotten smacked by the Hulk if he didn't develop a suit specifically to fight the Hulk. Right. The Hulkbuster armor is a whole nother set of armor he had yeah. to fight. Like, you know, as is, is is he Sam going to have a whole nother set of Captain America? But armor? that's also going to be like. If someone else does come save the day, isn't that also going to be disappointing? It would absolutely. Because it's like ruin the a movie. Captain America movie, and you're you're not saving the day by yourself, yeah. kind of thing. I mean, you can have help, but like, you expect the main character of the movie yeah. to to finish it. I mean, at the end of the Batman, if Superman flew in and just like <laughs> saved everyone from the flood, yeah, it would severely undercut Batman as the hero <laughs> of the story. Fly away, boy. I'll work I work alone. <laughs> I can't fly, actually. It's like a cute <laughs> costume. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that said, though, there's really cool action shots. I would love to see it filmed more in the style of Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier, because that kind of seems like that. It seems yeah. more grounded than but, some of the recent stuff. We've it's got. very like political thriller spy espionage vibes, yeah. So, which I can appreciate because that's what he can do. He can't fight the Red Hulk in the same way that even even it'd be hard to even believe he could fight the Red Hulk if he took the super soldier serum right because of the vast different in strength you know you watch avengers 2012 and cap is nowhere near strong enough to just punch one of those giant chitari ships the way hulk does in that climactic scene in avengers 2012 so i want to i want to circle back and kind of answer your original question does this movie fit in the the franchise of captain america or is it kind of its new thing if the movie is good It'll be really easy to accept as just a continuation. They're waiting to find if out. If the movie is not, I don't think anyone's going to include it when they're talking about the Civil or the Captain America trilogy. You do, know? Do you think there will be shots of Steve Rogers in this movie, whether they're flashbacks or a video or mm. old man Steve Rogers, if he goes to see him? Ooh, I don't. I feel like I feel like we won't see any new footage of uh, Chris Evans. You know, like maybe, maybe we'll maybe see like yeah, something older flashback on TV or something. You know, like something like that, maybe. But I don't think we'll see a cameo from. I think Chris it'd be. Evans. I think it'd be very poignant to see like maybe a commercial or something that's like bastardizing the image of Steve Rogers and like using him to like sell merchandise or tell people to like listen to the government or something like that. Some kind of propaganda or whether it's propaganda or whether it's just a. Uh, like capitalism based commercial and like kind of seeing Sam like scoff at that, like disrespecting somebody he respects. I think that could be a way that I could see them putting in a little bit of Steve Rogers footage. Okay. I have a question for you about this film, but also about future MCU projects. How big of a miss was it to not have the Russo brothers direct this film? I don't know. See, it's, it's hard for me to call it a miss because I think that the Russo brothers did, it's hard to say that they could have done any better with the projects they worked on. I mean, Captain America, Winter Soldier, building the confidence for them to be the directors for Infinity War and Endgame. I mean, yeah, they also directed Civil War. They did such a great, yeah, Civil War. I mean, War, they have four of the best 10 movies. Yeah, absolutely. So I would have loved to see them come back and direct this, but also 
I think it could be very easy for the world to get stale under the continued same direction. And I want to see other people take their shot at it. I also think it's cool. In this case, this movie is directed as you're showing just to you and me on our screen by a director named Julius Ona. And it's cool for this specific movie to have a black director for, you know, person of color character mm -hmm. for this story of shifting perspective to there's a lot of layers for Sam to be Captain America. So yeah. I think it makes a lot of sense. Sure. This switch. Um, I, I think it could be considered a mess, but it also couldn't be. It has it has ups and downs because, yeah, if I could if the Russo, if I could have the Russo brothers directing like all of the Marvel projects, it'd be cool. But I also want to see a different perspective from different directors. Okay, how do you feel? Mine. Uh, let me ask this next question first. There's been some stuff floating around TikTok and YouTube that I've seen where people are saying that Disney. Marvel should give the reins to the Russo brothers for the next two Avengers films. What do you think about that? I think that that's a lot more manageable to have the Russo brothers direct the big projects where they come together. Cause the, I don't know that the Russo brothers even want to do this. Cause there's, I mean, why would they not? Well, there's, you know, you want to direct different things. You don't want to be known for only directing Marvel movies specifically, Why? even if they're great. What's wrong with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I, I mean, would, I would want to do different things if I was directing. I would want to try different kinds of movies. I wouldn't, because these movies are huge undertakings, years. Like it's going to take a couple years of pre and post production, include, and then the actual production itself. So it's a big commitment. Whereas you could have spent that time maybe doing two or three other smaller projects and you could have experimented more. Maybe you, maybe they like doing superhero movies, but they also want to do a heist film or a romantic comedy or something. I mean, that's just me. If I, I would want some more, I would want to change. Yeah, I I don't think I see it the same way as you. I think um, if I were, as a viewer, I want them to be in charge of the next, because I have full faith in them to do all the characters justice, to connect all of these moving pieces and make a film that's going to blow everyone away, because they've done it four times in very similar situations. I mean, Civil War is basically an Avengers film, too. So they did three Avengers films. And then they also did the character study of uh, Winter Soldier. I, I have full faith in them to do most of the characters right, and I would pick them in a heartbeat to do the big team-up movies like we just said. But let's not forget Fat Thor from Endgame and everyone's disappointment in that character. I also think Professor Hulk was a huge disappointment as well in terms of screen time and usage in the plot. Um, so I don't think that they get all the characters perfect, and who knows how much of that is studio involvement, whatever, whatever. But... I think overall they do a great job at giving all the characters their time and then blending the worlds together, blending the tones, having the Guardians meet with um, Thor in Infinity War. All of that goes very, it goes amazing. So I definitely would pick them in a heartbeat for the next big team up movies. But I think for like the individual movies, give different directors their, their shot at it. And like it'd be cool to have that director throughout those characters following movies. The way that John Watts directed the three Spider-Man movies. Because even if those aren't my favorite Spider-Man movies of all time, the tone matches and the direction is the same through the, th the three movies. It feels very cohesive. Sure. So I think that something like that, give the directors a shot, the individual characters, stick with mm -hmm. those characters. And then maybe the Russo brothers, just because they're so good at the big movies, like you said, like the Civil Wars, Infinity Wars, and bringing everybody together. Those two, I think, specifically are, are really good in terms of the big movies. Um, yeah. Endgame, I think, got some of the characters a little bit wrong, but there's all kinds of elements, obviously, other otherwise involved writing and, and producers and studio. Yeah. But, yeah, I think it'd be cool to have them on board. I just don't want to pin it like they're the only ones that can do right by the MCU, you know? Yeah, but they are definitely the most proven They're the most people cons for the They're job. the most consistent, I would say. Yeah. Because uh, and the amount of projects that they've directed, yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, it'd be great to have John Favreau too. I mean, John Favreau directing the first Iron Man is stellar. So if we get John Favreau in there and direct an Avengers movie, it would probably be absolutely awesome. Yeah, I have a, a lot of faith point. in him and, and his directorial vision. Yeah, sure, that's a good point. But I think it's really good to the Russo brothers that they're a pair. It's because it's such a big undertaking. I have yeah. to imagine it helps. Yeah. I mean, I, feels like more people's eyes on something like that yeah. the more you can find those inconsistencies or maybe little holes because 
there's so much that you're juggling with character storylines, you know. Yeah. Um, and then the also like of everything. future projects coming up too. It seems like they're working on multiple films at a time. And since there are different directors and stuff working on these different projects, you know, like whatever you do in your film is going to directly affect the other film. So if they're planning on going this direction, you have to, you know, f make sure that it matches and you just whatnot. communicate with a lot of people. Yeah, it's and it's a big undertaking. Also, you probably have like what I don't know four to six second ads or not second ads, but you probably have ads, second ads. Like you probably are in charge of a lot of assistant directors. So to have two people coordinating with all those people probably helps too, just because the yeah. amount of looking at the amount of people that are underneath them, branching out from them. Um, yeah. I would like to see if you can, if you can get the pictures up here for the suits, because our suit comparison ha was it spawned some interesting conversation on the Superman episode and people were interested in that. They so put me on the spot here. I don't have those downloaded like I did for the other one. We can just Google uh, the Captain America, um, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier suit and then the Brave New World suit. But um, do you recollect the Falcon and the Winter Soldier suit in your mind? It's right there. There might be a side by side on that one picture. Where? Um, I saw it before. Go back, maybe. There, that's it. The one on the right is super grainy, but the the one from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is very clear. Yeah, I gotta save it here so we can pull it full screen. Give me a second. I um personally. We'll talk about it a little bit when the suit gets pulled up on here, but I think that the new suit looks a lot better. Oh yeah, for sure. I totally agree with you. The uh, the original there, guys. The suit that they showed in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is just a lot of white. It's very white. Where did it go? Why does it do this? You want to just pull us up on there without being full screen? No, I got it right here. It's saved to the other monitor. Of course. This is what happens when you don't give me time to prepare, you know? <laughs> I put you on the spot. Dude. I think that... Come on, get over there. I, it's strange to me that they changed the suit, though, because it feels like he just became Captain America. I don't know if the original suit, like, audiences... I mean, they change the Iron Man suit every single time we see him. Yeah, I Why guess... Why is that any different? Well, the... It's, I, it's not really strange, I guess I should say. It just feels very quick. But the thing is that every single time a superhero shows up on screen ever, they always change the suit. Because from what I understand, one of the main motivators is toys. Yeah. No one's going to buy the new toy if the suit looks exactly the same. So they make alterations to the suit, and now it's a new toy. So buy right. the kid this, cool. new, this new Captain America. All right, so we finally got it up on the screen here. On the left is from the TV show Falcon Winter Soldier. And then we have the new one on the right. It's not the best picture of it, but we can at least compare and contrast. I think the new one looks much better having the majority of the suit be blue instead of the majority of the suit being white. Yeah, it looks a lot more similar to the original Captain America suit. Yeah, it, it looks like Captain America. And the white kind of leathery look to me looks generic almost. What, you know, it looks... I, cheaper in a way i feel like the white from the first one just looks really clean like he looks very i don't know it looks like commercially you know like yeah. a car commercial or something like yeah. where there's no grit to it and it just looks really mm -hmm. i don't know it looks like advertisement based so i the new the new suit looks more suitable I don't, I don't hate the mask though on the first one i also i kind of agree i think the goggles can be a little bit goofy and i think the mask the way the mask incorporates the goggles might look a little bit cooler yeah yeah, I kind of dig the mask a little bit. Probably way more comfortable in the without the wraparound on the face. Though. Yeah, more probably. More to wear on set. Yeah, for sure. But, okay, what happens now? <laughs> the guy knocks his glasses off. And then, now he can't fly. Now he can't fly because he, he, he gets bugs in his eyes. <laughs> I think we're overlooking his dude. His head is so unprotected, and he's just a squishy human. <laughs> this has got to be one of the weakest. Even Captain America had a helmet, dude. I, I mean, there's a couple like people I would put money on beating him in the MCU that like don't have powers. <laughs> I feel like Kate Bishop would have a fair shot at him. I mean, she's incredibly accurate. I think the Punisher. I mean, I'd put my money on the punch. John Bernthal's punisher. Daredevil, I put my money on Daredevil. I guess, he, like, the wings, I'm kind of under. I don't know. Yeah. I'm I was going to say, I'm flying a, around is uh, a big yeah. advantage. Against Daredevil, especially. Yeah. Um, I kind of put, not putting enough weight on the wings, I guess. But I do feel yeah. like Kate Bishop would have a decent shot. If with, an, with an arsenal of a variety of arrows, 
I mean, yeah. he'd kind of have a hard time getting around that, I feel like. Yeah. And she's not Red Hulk. She's losing to Red Hulk. Yeah, she's definitely losing to Red Hulk. But I'd still point Wade Wilson. Wade Wilson? Is that his name? No. No. It's not his name. Deadpool. Sam. <laughs> Sam. I mean, I am over Kate Bishop, I'd say. I think it'd be a. I think. I think it'd be a know, top he's, match. he's like his top kick. move. <laughs> his kick, where he's flying in, How's spins she, around, and kicks her. How's she gonna defend that? Yeah, she's gonna get hit hard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if she can get an arrow in there before he spins around for the kick, maybe. Yeah, to, to like really charge up that move to full strength, he has to fly head on at somebody. Yeah, but he he also has guns, so I mean, he can start shooting at her. <laughs> like, guns are better than arrows, right? Not if you ask Hawkeye. <laughs> All right, what do you guys think? Let us know down in the description below. Does this movie look good? Did this trailer get you hyped? Uh, do you think this will be a acceptable addition to the Captain America trilogy franchise? Or is it going to be something that we exclude when we talk about Captain America? Uh, what do you guys think of the new suit as well? We have to wait all the way until what February? Fe is it? Yeah, we got a while. It's coming out uh, February fourteenth, I believe. Valentine's Day. Yep. The, the original Deadpool release. Boom. So next year, February, we have to wait towards. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do want to ask you again to please click that subscribe button. We are growing and growing, and we want to add to this community. So make sure you hit the like as well, hit the notification bell. You can follow us on all of our channels. We're on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Spotify. We're on all the podcast platforms, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. So make sure you go on Spotify and give us a five-star review. Um, you can also join our Discord, which has been having a lot of conversation lately. Um, it's been I've a lot been of roasting fun. Andrew, honestly. Oh my it's goodness. been so great for me to just sit on the sideline and be like, Ah, finally. No one ever roasts you. you get off I just free. I stay in the shadows. <laughs> I am the shadows. I don't have yeah. dumb opinions. I mean, neither do I. So I don't know why you would say that like that. Uh, um, but yeah, we've been debating about the Acolyte in there. But um, you do have to pay the the hefty startup okay. fee, Aaron. That's how much? It's free. It's totally free. So you can join in there and you can even give episode topic suggestions, which we normally get around to pretty quick. You can give us stuff that you want to watch. I think somebody might have mentioned this trailer in the Discord as well. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But we get around to those topic suggestions I think pretty quick. You were doing that. The yeah. Captain America trailer. <laughs> but also some exciting news too. We finished our rough cut of our second short film, which is called should, should we say Un announce unveil the title. It's called Hit for Hit. Oh, there it is. Uh, right now, it's sitting at just under 16 minutes long. Our first short film was six minutes long, so the 10 minutes more. It was definitely a much bigger, bigger project, so we're very excited. It's so uh, funny that only people that listen long enough, like past hearing us ask for the like subscription stuff, are going to hear the uh, unveiling of the title. So like yeah. almost nobody. Only like one person. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> if you're still listening, comment and let us know that you're still listening at this point and say what you think about the <laughs> comment hit for hit. You're going to be the one comment. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and that's a wrap. wrap.